Frenetti. You know, I put all my tips in this machine, and I just can't seem to hit a jackpot. But with her, she's been playing the wrong machines. Yeah. Look, another one-arm bandit out of order. You'd think that big clown would give up. Yeah, you'll be doing my favor, boss, by putting him out of business. Maybe I will. Billy in? No. Why don't you tell him to dump these old machines? Yeah, junk. They don't look so good. Especially in such a classy joint like this. Billy ought to have the latest models. And let's see that he gets it. Oh, sure, Mr. Finetti. Come on. Look who's coming. <laughs> well, if it ain't Big Tim, how are things going? Big, boys, big. Glad to hear it, Tim. Real glad to hear it. <laughs> They're always big with Big Tim. Hey, King. What did Fanetti in his folder once? Left this folder of the latest slot machines. You ain't gonna show this to Billy, are you? I got it, Tim. It's the second call Fanetti's made this week. Well, I don't want you to get into trouble because of me. You've been a good friend, Kink. But this will be the end of Big Tim. All right, go and show it him. Tim, can't you get some new equipment? These boxes of yours are pretty sad. I know that. They want a lot of money for them fancy jobs. It's them slug passes have been hitting me lately. But Big Tim will pull through. He'll come back. You keep your eyes open for me, ain't you? Oh, don't worry. Nobody's loading your machines with lead while I'm here. Uh, can I use your kitchen to fix this? Sure, Tim. Thanks. Here you are. Read all about it. Marines invade Iwo Jima. Hey, Kink, you want a paper? Nah, beat it. Gazette, complete racing result. There's a couple more bets on the fifth race. A lot of long shots come in Hialeah today. Better hold those beds. Here, give me one of those. I thought that'd sell you. Hey, you. Nothing came in long at Hialeah. Didn't it? Then you didn't get hit after all. Ain't you lucky? Come on, come on. Give me my nickel back. You bought the paper. You read it. Idea. You played that machine. Sure. And I hit the jackpot. You want to make something of it? You play those machines every time you come in here. Any law against that? If there is, you're the one who's breaking it. Letting a minor play. Hush, boy, hush. The idea of a little shaper like you gambling. Playing the slot machines at your age. What would your poor mother say if she knew it? She'd be ashamed. Hurt, wouldn't she? I ain't got no old lady. And if I had, it'd be none of her business. Oh. I understand. No mother. I, I was an orphan myself. Keep your big paws off me. And save all that orphan con. I won the jackpot and I'm keeping it. What's the matter, so broke you can't afford to pay off? You look at you big CD bum.
The slug passer. Do you know what I'd do with a slug passer? Go ahead. Sock me, sucker. But send yourself flowers, because you'll be laid to rest on our front page tomorrow. Even a dumb mug like you knows better than to rough up a news punk. You saved my editor a lot of ink. Tim, you're not going to let him get away with this. My slug's been bothering you, huh? If you had anything upstairs, you'd pay me to pass them out. Thousands of them every day, every news punk in town. What? Yeah, and in two weeks, the heels who have been pushing you into the gutter would be as broke as you are. Broker, because they got real money tied up in their fancy machinery. Not this kind of old hardware. Kink, he's right. Fanetti and Bruno and all them heels that have been pushing Big Tim around would be broke in a week. They wouldn't know what hit him. Do you know where you'd be once they found out? He'd be in a saddle or on a slab, depending upon how he plays his cards. Aye. This time, Big Tim's playing them smart. Hey, phone for Eddie. Tell him Billy just tossed my boxes out. He's going to get himself killed listening to you. Better than eating mud in the gutter. What's your name, Sonny? Dan. Dan Mason. Danny Mason, huh? Something tells me that you and me are gonna be great friends. I don't know. Look at these shoes. Look at this. You even need a haircut. Oh, we're gonna be great pals. It might work into something. You bet it will. Always remember, Big Tim never forgets a friend. Sue, cook my boy a big steak. Yes, sir. I have your hands looking so nice and soft now, Mr. Channing. <laughs> they wasn't always like that. You know, it took 10 years to get all that grease and grime out of me fingernails. 10 years. Hey, Kink, mm. do you remember that waitress dame that used to wait on us at Billy's Steakhouse? I used to call her apple dumplings. <laughs> you know, you're a ringer for her. Thank you, Mr. Channing. And now to the most shocking news of the day. All hopes for a crime cleanup in this city were dashed when, in Superior Court this morning, Big Tim Channing successfully blocked charges that he controls local racketeering by invoking a law passed by the territorial legislature in 1867. When the bench ruled that the forgotten statute was still in effect, a defense motion for dismissal was granted over the vigorous protests of the district attorney and his staff, and the case against Channing and his alleged associate, Tony Fanetti, collapsed. <laughs> And they said they had Big Tim this time. And you thought so too, Davis. I'd still like to know who fed you that legal angle. <laughs> that takes gray matter. Something you ain't got too much of anymore. When the law throws a Sunday punch, you either roll with it or slip under it. Now, the smart guy, he always slips under it. It wasn't so easy this time. With Fanetti riding on my coattail. Hey, boss. What's up? The DA's outside. Well, don't stand there. Show him in. He's probably come to congratulate me. I'm always pleased to meet the DA. And to think I knew you, Tim, before you ever had a manicure. Ten years ago, I would have had you pulled in, but now I come to see you. That shows we both got better manners today. Have a drink. No, thanks, Tim. That was a nifty legal rabbit that you and your boys pulled out of the hat this morning. Put you in the clear, Tim, for a while, anyhow. You too, Fanetti. But it seems that another state's interested in you for a little job that they call murder. What are you trying to say, Hunt? It's just that I've been asked to hold you for extradition. You can't do that. 
You think not? Take him in, Dawson. Wait a minute. Take it easy, Tim. Don't lay a hand on them. They'll take you along, too. They're within their rights. You'll never make this stick. Well, see. You better come along, too, Davis. You know, I've been trying to figure out who calls your legal signals since Davis has been disbarred. Well, I can't keep you from guessing. It has to be some old timer. Why do you say that? Well, who else would remember an old territorial statute that even the judge thought had been repealed 60 years ago? Yeah. Now, who else? Hey, Danny. You know, I might have known I'd find you here. How anybody can bury themselves in a dusty law book on a day like this, I'll never understand. Might be because I have a father who's a retired judge and I uh, want to pass the spring final. <laughs> As though there's a chance you won't top the class. Dan, what's eating you? Eating me? Yeah. I've never seen a guy study as hard as you. You have him time for sports? You never look at a gal. There's something chewing at you. You wouldn't work yourself so hard. Just want to make sure I graduate, that's all. Oh, well, there's, there's more to it than that. Yeah. Yeah, there is. I once showed a big, dumb slob how to hit the big jackpot. Big jackpot? I showed him how to make millions. Well, when was that? About 10 years ago. Ten years ago? Why, you were only 12 then. That's right. That's why I couldn't collect. <laughs> well, I, I must be an awful square, but I, I just don't understand. That's the idea. You're not supposed to. Oh, well, well. I'm sorry, Dan. I guess I'm just a nosy roommate. Don't worry. I'll never probe again. Tim, look who's here. Danny the champ. Oh, I'm glad to see you, Danny. Oh, ho, ho, the DA didn't know what hit him this morning. <laughs> he was right here. Yeah, still punch drunk. <laughs> hey, you know, he thinks you're an old guy with whiskers. Yeah. Yes, yeah, lucky the dean's nearsighted. He got wise that I borrowed that book from his library. Oh, that might have been bad, Danny. Well, it wouldn't have been good since he's on the bar examination board. Oh, you better let me buy him a case of hooch, him and his board members. You know, we can't stand for any slip up now. I waited a long time for you to come and join up with me here. Just one more jump to take, Tim. Spring finals. Yeah. And then you come from under the raft, huh? Yep. Oh, that'll be a big day for Big Tim. It'll be a pretty big day for me. Who'd have thought 10 years ago I'd ever be a lawyer? Right. Shows you what a few slugs can do, if you use them right. <laughs> hey, Danny, let's have a drink. Come on. Now, let's save it till after graduation, huh? Oh, and then we will tie one on and celebrate, huh? Just you and me. Okay, it's a deal. Tell you something, Danny. You know, you're closer to me than a son. Yet we've never pelled around together. Well, how about your son's allowance? Why, sure, Danny, sure. And you know, I put an extra saw back on one in the fifth and Anita for you today. And it came in big, real big. <laughs> they don't run on Monday at Anita. Look, Tim. Don't get the idea you're doing me favors. The shoe's on the other foot. Oh, Danny. Everything I got is yours. Any time. <laughs> <laughs> at first, I thought you were mad at me. Ah, now, nah, you old alligator. I want you to meet a couple of associates of mine. Davis De Bruno, Danny Mason. You'll be seeing him a lot around here very soon. Glad to know you, Danny. You better get that legal wizard of yours working. The DA is getting chummy with that out-of-state bunch. Can't tell what they'll pin on Fanetti once they get him across the state line. Don't I know you from somewhere? 
I doubt it. I'll see you, Kink. Wait a minute. I never forget a face. You're the little rat that had all those news kids pushing lead slugs years ago. Look out, Danny. It's all right, Tim. This guy's all bark. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll have none of that. Uh, he wrecked Fanetti and me. He means you, you mean. Why, that flood of slugs forced Fanetti into the syndicate. That was just the beginning. And we've had the whole town tied up ever since. Danny, I never taught you that way. I always said, lead with the left and cross with the right. Danny, what is that rap they call the... Uh... Extradition. Yeah, extradition. Extradition, yeah. We talked about it in the seminar last week. What's the trouble? Well, the DA fumbled the ball here. And he's trying to make his next play across the state line. He's got Fidetti. What's the charge? Number one, murder. Oh, it's an old rap that won't stand up. Of course, they can bring out a lot of things that won't do us any good around here if they put Tony on the stand. What about the governor? We've no drag there. Well, the state line can't stop an extradition warrant if it carries a murder indictment. We know that. That's why we need an angle bad, Danny. How much time we have? The DA is holding Fanetti without bail pending arrival of the warrant. I'd say four to five days at the most. Get somebody up the state capitol fast and throw some sand the wheels. That should give me a couple of more days. I think I know a way to beat this one. But then he was yanked back here to stand trial, wasn't he? Yeah? Yes. I think maybe the DA's gonna find out he got his signals crossed again. But throw that sand in. We'll need all the time we can get. Be seeing you, Danny. So that's where the legal rabbits are coming from. Yeah. You putting him through that law school? Indirectly, yeah. I suppose I'm supposed to move over after he graduates. All the way. You already did, only you don't know it. What about my cut? Oh, that remains the same. You still belong to the syndicate. When did this punk sell you this? How do you get that way? Nobody sells me anything. Somebody had to give you the idea. I just took a page from the opposition. Today, federal agents has to have college diplomas. The lawyers and accountants. Hey, why don't you become an accountant? <laughs> You've just to figure for it. <laughs> <laughs> Under the provisions of the Constitution and the law of the United States, it's definitely the duty of the governor to deliver to the executive authority of any other state any person charged in that state with treason, felony, or other crime who has fled justice and is found in this state. What if the person hasn't fled, sir? Hasn't fled? What if the person was transported, say, by uh, law enforcement officers to this other state against his or her will? Certainly his presence in this state wouldn't be an act of his or her own volition. You're quite right. It would certainly not be an act of his or her volition. One would almost be tempted to say that you'd found a very grave loophole in the law, Mason. Roy, since your father is so eminent in this field, perhaps you'd like to explain to the class and Mr. Mason why the party would still be liable to extradition. Well, Dean, I'm hardly an authority like my father, but I would say that whether the leaving is voluntary or involuntary is not pertinent. Exactly. That answer your question, Mason? Yes, sir. Mason, you seem to take an uncanny interest in evasions of the law. Well, hardly uncanny, sir. I wouldn't have to ask your opinion so often. Guess you're right there. You've asked more questions than any student I've ever had. But it's always the weaknesses of the law that seem to interest you. Well, is that bad in criminal practice, sir? Maybe not. That's all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, fella, I sure took the honors today. Gosh, I can hardly miss that one. It's Dad's specialty. Yeah, I've been running across some of his cases in here. Uh, Roy, uh, I'm sorry about yesterday. Oh, forget it. I guess I'm getting a little touchy now that we're getting near the finals. Gonna spend the vacation with the folks? Yeah, I'm pushing off in the morning. 
I give my best to your sister. So you finally noticed it. What's that? Well, her picture. I don't think I'd follow. Oh, you wouldn't. See, I've told my folks a lot about you. Such as? Oh, how hard you study. Won't let anything distract you. Well, last time Fern, that sis, said, you know, I bet I could distract him. So she made me take the picture. And I've been kidding her every week in my letters how you'd never noticed it. Well, uh, maybe you better tell your sister she won her bet. Well, why don't you just drive down in the morning with me and tell her yourself? Oh, well, I couldn't do that. Did your folks think of me barging in on them like that? Oh, they'd love it. Roy, I appreciate it, but... No buts about it. You're coming. Well, how do you do? How are you, Mrs. Fellows? And my father. Hello, Danny. Very glad to know you, sir. And this, my sister. Fern, Danny. Hello. Hello. I think I ought to apologize, Mrs. Fellows, for barging in on you like this, but I was told that a member of your family would be in dire financial trouble if I didn't. You stay good, you told him. Why? Well, I... I don't understand. Who's in dire financial trouble, Roy? Yes, he just lost a month's allowance. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Think I'll cut you in. Well, looks as though these two people are gonna get along all right. <laughs> On my money. <laughs> <laughs> well, make yourself right at home, Danny. Thank you. Now, Judge, I understand you have quite a collection of rare law books. Why, yes, it's been a hobby of mine for years. Would you like to see them? I certainly would, sir. Please, let's not get him started. <laughs> Take a chance. Good night, Mom. Oh, good night, son. So long, Pop. Have a good time. I don't stay out too late. <laughs> now, now, the boy's grown up. <laughs> Change your mind about coming with me to the dances? Well, good luck. Oh, it's such a beautiful night. Which do you think will win, knowledge or nature? Mm, I'll give nature another few minutes. <laughs> I've never known a boy with such an appetite for legal facts or more grateful for a little advice. What do you say we turn in? Oh. You know, for Fern's sake, I just wish you hadn't shown him those books on extradition proceedings. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Good night, dear. Now, if you go to the dance, be sure and take something for over your shoulders. Mm, I have my shoulder. If you're through with your old studying, why... Well, the dance doesn't last forever. Look, I know this is another bet with Roy, but... Roy had nothing to do with this. Well, if you wanted to go to the dance, you should have gone with one of your local admirers. You don't leave a girl very much pride, do you? What's pride got to do with it? In any of your old books, in Article 2, Section 3, it means... Well, if I couldn't go to the dance with you, I just didn't want to go. <laughs> and anyway, Roy thought that... Maybe could stand a little bit of fun for a change. Okay. Come on, Dan. Maybe I should take a little time to live. <laughs> what did you say that article was? Article 2, Section 3. <laughs>
guess I left my cigarettes in the car. I'll go with you. No. You wait here. I'll be right back. What are you doing down here? I drove Big Tim and Davis. They want to talk to you. They're over in the car. That's a pretty slick chick you got there. You're doing all right for yourself. Oh, Danny, my boy, I'm glad to see you. I wrote you I was getting a dope at Spring Finetti. Dan, we can't wait. The governor's granted a warrant. The TA will serve it tomorrow. Here. This will block the governor's warrant. What is it? It's a little angle I didn't think of. <laughs> I knew you'd do it, Danny. Hey, hop in. We really will tie one on tonight and celebrate. I'm not going back, Tim. I'm staying down here. What? Look, I got two weeks before exams. I need a little vacation. But, Danny, we need you. It's all down there. Davis will know what to do. What's the matter, Danny? I came down here like a... Well, like a pickpocket to get something. Well, I got it. Look, these are decent people. Now, get out. Oh, Danny. Get out, I said. Danny. Oh. I wonder what's come over Danny. If you ask me, I think he's turned square. No, not Danny. Wait a minute, doll. Cut it out, Danny. You know how these country broads are. You know the guy that cops the first blow is supposed to win the fight? Not this one. Danny! Hey, you keep out of this. It's my policy to let my boys settle their own beef. Go on, Danny. <laughs> Square, is he? <laughs> seen the day you nicked my Danny. I told him myself, get in there, you big bum. You don't want Danny's nice folks to see him in this predicament, do you? You might have killed him. I know it. Danny. Look, Fern, you might as well know it. Where I come from, that's where we play the game. I'll get my things. Danny. I just want you to know None of that makes any difference. Roy's packing. My stuff's in the car. Yes, I know. It's going to seem kind of quiet around here with both of you gone. What I mean is, we're going to miss you. You don't mean it, you're being very cruel. I mean it more than I thought I could ever mean anything in my life. Oh, you might have even gone without telling me. I should have. 
Mm -hmm. I intended to. Look, Fern, forget me and don't try to understand. But it's too late for that, Danny. I can't forget you. Fern, I didn't come down here because of your picture. I know. I've known that ever since the very first day. I tricked your brother into inviting me down here because... I wanted to pick your father's brains about extradition laws. For Tim Channing? The man you told me about last night? Yeah. So you see, I'm... I'm a pretty low kind of guy. You think you've proven that? Hmm? Have I? Not to me, you haven't. I just can't walk out on Big Tim. But he's a crook. He's a racketeer. Yeah. Danny, you think you owe him everything. You don't. But well, he's been using you for years, ever since he first found you. You got it wrong, honey. I found him. But you were just a kid. How did you know what you were doing? You were only 12 years old. I've always known what I was doing. Never made a move without knowing exactly when and how much it would pay off. <laughs> That's why the joke's on me now. As for Tim, without me to stir him, that poor, big, dumb baboon would be chopped down in six weeks. And if that happened, I'd be to blame. I just couldn't live with myself. I'll figure out a way that'll be right for you and me and Tim. Just believe in me. Wait for me. Give me a little time. A lifetime, Danny. But you won't need that long. Look what our boy won. A diploma. Ain't that swell? You know, I feel I almost won that myself. But we did it together, didn't we, Danny? Let me say it again. Tim, did you ever stop to think the law can lose a hundred times, but you only have to lose once? What are you worried about, Danny? Why you stop the DA in his track every time? Twice in one week, just a month ago. Remember? That doesn't mean I can do it again. Or I'll want to. I don't get you, Danny. Maybe you haven't been reading the papers lately. Here. Look at these clippings. Hoodlum Wave continues. Police powerless to cope with vandalism. Businessmen have mass meeting to combat crime. And this editorial. We're witnessing a complete breakdown of law and order in this city. All right, all right. So the police are helpless, and the public's up in arms. What business is that of ours? Only that it's time to get on the right side of the street. I know you've been feeling that way ever since you met that girl. Look, Danny, if you want a girl, I got a friend. Any shape, any... Ah, oh, to go on, it's a switch like that's hard to make. That's where you're wrong. You've got the business protection racket in this town tied up. But it's always been a shakedown. Run it straight, give honest protection, like the town's never seen before. And at rates everyone can afford, you'll have a legitimate business. The law can't touch it. What about the boys? Let them have everything else, give it to them. Just step out with this. They wouldn't touch it anyway, the way I'm gonna run it. I understand, Danny. Then you won't have to worry about poor old Tim spending the rest of his life in the pen. Well, that's part of it, you know, big baboon. Yeah, I know, Danny. And don't think I don't feel it, neither. Right here. But what makes you think you can set this thing up? Look, with prominent and reputable businessmen on the board, there won't be any trouble getting a charter. 20th century security, we'll call it. We'll operate his own radio station and a fleet of patrol cars. Costs a lot of money, Danny. We'll make it up in volume. We'll offer our services at rates so cheap that everyone can buy it. Here. It's all down here. 
Read it. I'll read it. I'll read it, Danny. And here's our diploma. Ah, I'm proud of you, my boy. Now, that's Danny's proposition. Of course, he ain't to know that I made it to you. Well, that's it. He wants us to be bargain basement cops. Oh, you look pretty with a badge riding around in a patrol car. Are you kidding? Oh, listen. Danny says he ain't gonna have no mugs in the organization. He's gonna hire nothing but ex-service men and retired police officers. Is he crazy? That'll just run up the costs. What's the angle? Where's the payoff? I'm coming to that later. Listen to this. Uh, <clears throat> the 20th Century Security will have a subsidiary corporation, the 20th Century Insurance Company, which will insure our clients against theft, pilfage, arson, malicious damage, and so on. And Danny says that insurance companies make so much money, they control 50% of the wealth of the nation. Uh, he's right about that. You should see what them bandits clipped me for fire and theft on my baby blue convertible I just bought. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> who in his right mind would want to steal Tony Panetti's car? <laughs> hey, you're right, who would? And yet they charge me the full rate. You know, Danny may have something. Insurance is all profit as long as the companies don't have to pay any losses. And De Bruno's boys could see that we don't have any. Now remember, Danny ain't to know that you're in on this. If we put up the money, we're in. I see no harm in letting Danny think he's going straight as long as we get the benefits. All right. So long as he doesn't try to outsmart his friends. Ah, oh, Danny wouldn't do that. I'm going to put up our money first thing in the morning. Okay. Meeting adjourned to the bar. <laughs> Yeah, this is 20th Century Security. What? Who's this calling? Calling Mobile Unit 11. Calling Mobile Unit 11. This is Mobile Unit 11. I just got a tip from an unidentified caller that the Diamond Exchange building is being robbed. Investigate. Roger. are really on the ball. You know, some guys will never learn. I bet you they'll think twice in Toledo before they'll try that again. Is that where their mugs come from? Sure, they contacted me last week. I told them this was a closed town. That's what gave me the idea to tip off Danny's boys. Oh, I'll bet Danny makes a big thing out of this. Yes, Mr. Mason. Come in, Miss Faraday. I want to use this copy in our weekly bulletin. Oh, I've already called our publicity director. Mr. Juergens is waiting outside now. Good girl. Hi, Phil. Hi, Dan. Read the papers? Yeah. Great show your security guards put on last night. I want you to play it up as another example of 20th century's vigilance. That's a swell idea. Here. Here's a list of our new accounts for the month. I want you to put them in, too. Well, this means new art and cuts. I don't see how we can possibly be in the mails by Monday. Well, I'm sure you can do it, Phil. Well, I'll do my best. Oh, well, Linda, I brought you a present. Some old pencils, compliments to the Jurgens Advertising Agency. We're overloaded with pencils now. When are you going to start handing out the perfume and the nylon? <laughs> well, we don't have to bribe our best customers. See you, Dan. 
I love the way you use that little boy's smile to make people break their necks for you. What's my schedule for today? You dress the citizens' committee at 12.15. I've taken a room for you in the mezzanine floor so that you can meet the press boys before you go down to lunch. Fine. I've seen setups before, but never the equal of this one. Thugs rob and pillage businessmen and homeowners, forcing them to subscribe to Mason's security service. And the newspapers beat the drums for him. And the Citizens Committee invites Mason to be its guest of honor. Channing and Mason are using the people's lack of respect for the police to build an invisible, criminally controlled empire. And this isn't the end. The city's merely the proving ground. This is a new pattern in legal crime. It'll spread to every large city in the country if we don't stop it. But if there's a tie-in, an arrangement whereby Channing's mob lays off of 20th century clients, Mason would have to be in touch with them. Everything we've got says he isn't. Mason doesn't have to be in touch with them. Have you seen this list? It comes out every week. The names of every firm buying 20th century security. You notice the few times that 20th century subscribers have been robbed, it's been by some outside mob that doesn't know the local ground rules. I'll admit it looks that way on the surface. It is that way, but proving it's something else again. It's like trying to get a grip on a slippery rock. Perhaps we've been looking under the wrong rocks. It took Mason a long time to work out all the angles. Perhaps it'd help if we raked over some of the old grounds. What about that college roommate of his, Roy Fellows? He lives with his folks, practices law with his father, a judge. Phil, I think you'd better pay them a call. Lay it on the line. Right now. I just know he's an investigator. <laughs> Whatever give you that idea? He's in the city and he has a red spotlight on his car. So he's got it turned down. Well, whatever it is, it's your father's and Roy's business and none of ours. If it's about Dan, it's my business. You know the name of the man he did odd jobs for? Chandler, something like that. What difference does it make? Big Tim Channing is the name. He's head of what we call a syndicate. Well, if that's the case, maybe you'd better just investigate me, too. Because half the time, I gave Dan a hand. And as I told you, Mr. Juergens, everything we know about Dan Mason is greatly in his favor. Dan Mason? Did I hear you say Dan Mason, Father? It's so warm. Would any of you care for some lemonade? Uh, this is my daughter, Fern, Mr. Juergens. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Fern. I take it you got to know Dan Mason pretty well last year when he was here. Well enough to know that Dan Mason is the finest and bravest person I've ever met with the most splendid mind and character of anyone I've ever known. That he's much too serious and studious, but once you get his mind off his work, he's more fun than ten other people. That he wouldn't lie, steal, or cheat, and, and anyone who says he would is just... Well, it, it's just plain lying. Fern. But, Father, I've just begun. Now, I'd like some lemonade. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll get it right away. Oh, Danny. Thank you. I know the deal was for me to keep out of sight, but something serious has turned up. Get in. It'll only take a minute. A friend of mine has the waste paper collection contract at your building. I done him a good turn once, and he returned it the other day. Well? Well, an outfit moved into his warehouse. And the way my friend described it to me, this is a lamp that makes certain waste paper shine in the dark. And all they has to do is to fish it out like that. Simple as that. Some sort of luminous spray like they use on wash tiles. Yeah, yeah a sort of a, a dark powder. But the point is this. The waste paper they're fishing out comes from your waste paper basket. 
Oh, probably an investigator from the State Insurance Commission. No, no. They ain't got that kind of equipment. It's either the DA's office or the Fed's. Well, what are you worried about? We're operating a legitimate business. We've got nothing to hide. Or is there something I should know about? No, no, no. Electric sharpeners are great, except you have to empty them all the time. I don't know what's keeping Dan. He said he'd be back at 3.30, and he's never late. Well, I better get to work on this ad copy. Phil, I, I don't feel well. well. Why don't you run along? Dan will be here in a minute. Give me his OK. I can carry on until then. I think I will. Just tell Dan I'll be back in a little while. I'm just going to the drugstore. I got to him and told him, but he ain't worried. He seems to think the thing is foolproof. Huh. Maybe we're the ones that are the fools. The deal's getting too big, Tim. I think it's time Danny was told who he's working for. Hey, we can't do that. We agreed that he would be running the whole show. All right, but I hate to have a guy who's working for me step on me. Hey, boss. What's that? There's a dame outside. It says her name's Faraday. Faraday? Is that why that's the... Dan's uh, secretary. Send her in. What's she doing here? You didn't think for a moment with Mason sitting on all that dough, I wasn't going to keep an eye on him. She's on our payroll. On our payroll? Why, I... Mind your manners now. She's a lady. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Faraday. It's a pleasure. Uh, Mr. Channing's an associate of mine. Pleased to meet you. I called your office, but they said you were here. <laughs> Mr. Channing's the one who found out about the waste paper. You say they're using a dark powder? Yeah, some sort of a black dust, wasn't it? Yeah. Don't tell me you tumbled to how they're doing it. If I'm right, it's the lead in those pencils. And the agent is the man who handles our advertising. What's his name? Jurgens, Phil Jurgens. Jurgens, Jurgens, no. Look, Finetti, Danny says that he can... All I've been off. hearing from you is what Danny says. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't obey... You stop about blowing off and take the lady out. Take her out. Why, well, I'll throw her out. <laughs> A faint right in the middle of the whole setup. We'll check these pencils. Wonder how much he's found out. And then we'll take care of it our own way. There's a Miss Fellows outside. Do you want to see her? Do I want to see her? Oh, Dan. <laughs> Oh, uh, Miss Fellows is marrying me next month. Oh, I see. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Your last letter said not till next week. I know. Dan, is everything all right? Better than all right. I'm just about to break the news to Tim that he's retiring to Florida to clip dividends. Oh. Why, what's the matter? Well, a man named Jurgens came down to the farm. He wanted to know what we knew about you. Did you tell him? What Roy and Dad said to him could have made your ears ring. And I told him a few things myself. <laughs> I bet you did. Dan, you're not really in trouble. Huh? Well, I mean, Father said the man was from the district attorney's office. No, honey. Just a routine investigation. The usual thing when you're in the insurance business. No. Did you say his name was Jurgens? Yes. Hmm. How about lunch? Oh, I'd love it. But aren't you busy? Oh, swamp, snowed under, up to the neck. Oh, then I won't let you. You're keeping your nose to the grindstone. You're taking on a lot of obligations next month. Right. Hmm? Why are we waiting? Why don't we do it now? But, Dan, we couldn't. I've got everything planned. I've practically got all my bridesmaids picked. You don't mean it. What do you think? Oh! Let's go get a marriage license. Oh.
attorney has just disclosed that Philip Jurgens, 42, advertising executive slain last night, was a member of his investigating staff. Well, what do you know about that? While the police have issued no statements as to the identity of the killer or killers who shot down Jurgens in the doorway of his home last night, the district attorney's announcement puts the killing in a new light. It is rumored that the murdered man was... I thought I'd find you all here. Did they move in on you, Tim? Or were they in all the time? We were never out, smart boy. Danny, I, I, I just don't know what to say to you, but... I had to cut them in. It was the only way I could give them a free hand. Free hand? Why don't you get wise to yourself, kid? Nobody operates in this town without me. You won't be operating much longer, from that after that rub out last night. Just keep talking, kid. You get the same thing that Fink got. From De Bruno's not here. Take your hands off me. Sure, Danny. Sure. I tried to save you from ending up in the electric chair. Well, you're gonna wind up there anyway. Here, take this, will you? I won't be able to use it. Not now. Marriage license. This will put so many people out of a job. You work so hard, we've all worked so hard. Dan, Big Tim's told me everything. This is a family affair. Get out. Dan, you're not to blame, and Big Tim couldn't help it. He tried. I tried. We'll go into that later. The district attorney ain't giving me too much time, Danny. What's the DA got to do with this? Big Tim phoned him. He's made an appointment to see him as soon as he gets our honeymoon started. <sighs> honeymoon? We're not even married. But we will be, darling, in a few minutes, if you can bear it. Sister, keep out of here before you get padlocked in. And tell that boss of yours, Fanetti. I'll be seeing him in jail. Danny, this is an elopement. Your things are in Timmy's car. We stopped at your apartment on the way here. Yes, and I phoned the caretaker, and he has the cabbing all ready for you. All it's missing is a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and she called me Timmy. <laughs> Hold it, King. Hello. Yeah. Hey, now, wait a minute. Take it easy. Yeah. Yeah? When's he meeting him? How long ago did he leave? Thanks. It's a Faraday dame. She says Big Tim is running out on us. He's gonna meet the DA. When? Sometime late this afternoon. Where is he now? That's what we're gonna find out right now. Get him. Uh, here. All right, where is he? I don't know where he is, honest. I don't believe you, Kink. Beat it out of him. <laughs> All right, oh, now, where is he? Oh, I don't know. Don't oh. give me that stuff. You've been on Big Tim's side for years. Where is he? I don't know. Oh. Oh. Please don't. Let oh. me have it. Where is he? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Oh. I know is 
He phoned the caretaker to build a fire in the mountain cabin. That's better. Now see to it that he doesn't get to the DA. What time is it, Mrs. Mason? Mrs. Mason. <laughs> it's about four o'clock, and if you don't hurry up, we'll have to walk to the top of that hill. Patience, my boy. Patience, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Channing, they got the fire all built. Plenty of poop, plenty of wood, just like you asked. Ah, that's fine, yeah. fine. This is Mr. and Mrs. Danny Mason. They're using my cabin for their honeymoon. Well, now ain't that nice. to you before I close up for the evening. Oh, and Mr. Mason, would you mind taking the first chair up, please? I'll be very careful. Stand on that platform. I'll be careful getting in. When you get in, just put the bar in front of that. So right, that's it. I can assure you, you won't be disturbed. You've got the whole mountain to yourself. I don't think we'll mind that. I was hoping you'd like it. Thanks, Tim. Big baboon. So long, kids. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You want to start this marriage with bad luck? It's usual for the groom to carry the bride over the threshold. <laughs> Here, Timmy, take this. After all, you were my bridesmaid. Ain't it usual to toss it? Let's do it right, huh? All right. Good luck, kids. Gentlemen? Yeah, we'd like to get a ride up the top. Mr. Channing expecting you? 
Sure, we're part of the wedding party. Bringing a present for the bride. Well, in that case, you get one of these chairs, and when you get to the summit, take the path to the right. It's the first cabin. You better come down with Mr. Channing, because I'll be closing down. and try and make it back to the lift. Come on. I got him post. You wait here. I'll get help. Oh, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I'm afraid. Danny, you remember a long time ago, 
I caught you putting the slugs in my machine. Yeah. <laughs> you thought you were smart, didn't you? I thought so, too. You weren't smart. Uh, I know it now. Whenever you play with slugs, you only get slugs back another day. Do me a favor, will you? Anything, Tim. Always remember that. I'll remember. Yeah. Fine. I lost your wedding bouquet. Oh, Tim, how can you think of that now? I was so busy when you were getting married. I, I forgot to kiss the bride. Will you kiss me now to make me an honest best man? When I was a little shaver about that high, I used to dream an angel came and kissed me. And it felt just like that. Danny, you're big enough to take over from here. Go on, kiss the bride. Kiss her, go on. Go on, Danny. Big Tim has taught you a lot of things. <laughs> but this, you could do yourself. <laughs> 